All of the equipment I mentioned in today's video is linked down in the description. Let's start with the main focus of the entire setup, the desk. This is the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7. This 72 by 30 inch wide bamboo desk makes for plenty of space for all your work needs. I have a huge amount of desktop space with minimal clutter for a clean and efficient working environment. It has a desk range height from 22.8 to 48.4 inches tall, powered by super strong motors that can hold up to 355 pounds and feel solid. I have the premium controller that I pre-programmed to have a sitting position, standing position, and a third setting that's just a tad bit higher so I can push the chair underneath the desk and it looks nice and tidy while I'm away. What's also pretty sweet about the premium controller is that it has a USB port so you can charge any device you need. If you're like me, working 6 to 12 hours a day, or sometimes even longer, sitting for that long can take a toll on your body. Being able to stand up and stretch your legs while you work is key for long work sessions. Assembly was also really easy as all you needed was a screwdriver to mount the legs to the desktop. I chose to go with the black legs because I wanted a black and bamboo aesthetic for the setup. This desk starts at $549 and gets more expensive depending on the desktop style, controller, and size options. My overall impression so far is 10 out of 10. Love this desk. So I do all of my work on the new Apple MacBook Pro M1 Max. I got this laptop because I needed something powerful but portable when I'm traveling. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive of onboard storage. I opted to get the one terabyte internal hard drive because I use super fast external SanDisk Extreme SSD Pros as my main storage solution. These little guys are portable but powerful. The software I use primarily on the computer is Ableton for sound design and music production, Lightroom and Photoshop for photo editing, and DaVinci Resolve for all of my video editing needs. I keep it in clamshell mode most of the time under this black and Sigma monitor desk stand holding my monitor, which keeps things looking clean on the desk and only costs about 25 bucks. Plugged into the computer via USB-C is my audio interface, the PreSonus 24C. It has two XLR microphone inputs on the front and line ins and MIDI on the back for dedicated external speakers and MIDI instruments. Plugged into it via XLR is a Cloudlifter CL1, which is then connected to the Shure SM7B microphone. This microphone has incredible sound quality and has been the flagship of all microphones for quite some time. It's popular for podcasts, recording vocals and instruments, but I primarily use it for tutorials and voiceovers. The microphone is mounted to a Gator Frameworks Deluxe Desk Mounted Microphone Boomstand 3000 series, which has an integrated XLR cable. It also folds up easily, keeping the desk real estate open while I'm not using it. The microphone, cloud lifter, and boom stand will run you about $820 in total. Since the new MacBook Pro M1 Max has a dedicated full-sized HDMI port, I utilize this by plugging in my Dell Ultra HD 4K monitor P2715Q. It's a 27-inch screen LED lit monitor. I've used this monitor for years and love it. It's a simple, color accurate, and glare free monitor which I have calibrated for all of my photo and video editing needs. Will I upgrade it in the future at some point? Probably, but for around 300 bucks right now, you can't beat the price for such an awesome monitor. Mounted to the top is the BenQ screen bar. Instead of having a desk lamp that takes up space, I have the BenQ screen bar mounted to the top of the monitor which keeps the desk clutter free. What's nice about the screen bar is it plugs into a USB on the back of the monitor, which keeps the cable management on the back clean. You can rotate the screen bar so you can't see it while you're working, but it's illuminating the entire desk workspace. It also has touch sensitive buttons on the top for adjusting color temperature and brightness, but I just keep it in auto mode, which adjusts the color temperature and brightness automatically to the ambient light around you while you're working throughout the day. I decided not to put speakers on the desk, so instead I use the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro headphones. And in case you don't know where to find music for your YouTube videos, Musicbed is what I use, and it's been such a streamless process finding music I need. With that said, it's important to hear your audio clearly, so that's why I suggest you invest into some good headphones like the ones I use. In my opinion, audio is just as important as video. Connected to the MacBook Pro via Bluetooth is the wireless Logitech MX Master mechanical keyboard and MX Master 3S mouse. I really do love the feeling of the mouse in my hand compared to the Apple mouse I had before because it just doesn't create wrist fatigue after hours of use. The mechanical keyboard did take some time to get used to because I was using the Apple keyboard before. But like any new piece of gear, it just takes a little bit of time to get adjusted to it. Underneath the keyboard and mouse is just a simple black leather desktop mat I got off of Amazon. So if you know me, I love plants, so the only proper thing for me to do was have a real juniper bonsai tree that keeps me company while I work throughout the day. You can find these on Amazon or at your local nursery. Get yourself a plant, it will make your day better. 
Paired with this amazing desk is the autonomous Ergo Chair Pro. Having a comfortable chair is crucial for people who spend long days in front of the computer. The stabilizing back support corrects your posture. It also reclines so it fights fatigue. The flexible lumbar cushion protects the natural curvature of your spine and eases both pain and stiffness, relieving back pain, whether you're writing at the desk, looking at the monitor, or leaning back to relax. The headrest is also super nice as it will help prevent hunching in any position. When I first got it, it was really uncomfortable because it was correcting my terrible posture from before. But now after using it for about a year, it's like sitting in a cloud. It's $499, but worth every penny. Now let's talk about my camera and lighting setup for when I record videos. I use the Sony a7S III with a Sigma Art 24-70 lens. I believe this is the best camera and lens combo you can get for your money today. The a7S III is the most versatile camera for any hybrid shooter shooting insanely good videos and photos. And if you pair it with the Sigma Art 24-70 to lens, it will cover 90% of your photo and video needs. I have traveled all around the world with this camera, and it's a workhorse. The camera is mounted on a Manfrotto tripod with the fluid head. Connected to the camera via HDMI is a 5-inch port keys monitor so I can get proper exposure and frame myself without having to look at the tiny screen of the a7S III. For my talking headshots, I thread on the Freewell mist filter to the lens to soften the image up. The magnetic Freewell variable ND filter system bundle is super useful when I'm out in the field allowing me to expose in any lighting conditions. But I only use the mist filter in times where I want a dreamy look or when I'm filming here at the desk. I love the way it blooms out the highlights and softens the image making the video not look so digital. You don't have to use a mist filter, it's just a personal style I enjoy. Alright, so let's talk about this really cool looking light. This is the GVM 600S LED light. For its size and price, this thing is super unique and versatile, and boy does it pack a punch. You can use it for YouTube videos, photography, or any lighting setup you'd ever need. It has 90 watts of output power and has a CRI rating of 97 and higher, which means the color accuracy stands alongside some of the most expensive lights out there. Fully dimmable from 10 to 100%, and you can adjust the color temperature between 3200 and 5600 Kelvin. What's really unique is obviously the shape of this light, but it creates really cool star-shaped catch lights in your eye. Pretty badass for only 169 bucks. I also use a C stand, which is crucial if you want to get top-down shots. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this entire setup. If there's any questions you have or anything you think I should add to this space, let me know down in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed.